Welcome back to the video series on making international in Korea. In this week, I'm going to explain about the wartime declarations. There was general agreement that the San Francisco Peace Treaty could only endorse the territorial agreements made at Cairo, Yalta, and Potsdam. In fact, territorial dispositions of the San Francisco Peace Treaty they follow the terms of the disagreements in the U.S. studies and policy decisions relating to the implementation of this agreement. The pertinent provisions of this agreement are the Japan will be expelled from the all other territories which she has taken by violence and greed in the Cairo Declaration on December 1st of 1953. The Kuril Island shall be handed over to the Soviet Union in the Yalta Agreement of February 11, 1945. And Japanese sovereignty shall be limited to the island of Honshu, Hokkaido, Kyushu, Chicago, and such minor islands as we determine in the Potsdam Proclamation of the July 26, 1945. And the Japan accept the provisions set forth in the Potsdam Proclamation, in the Japanese government statement accepting U.S. terms of surrender dated August 14, 1945. The Cairo Declaration refers specifically only to the territories Japan has stolen from Chinese, such as Manchuria, the Formosa, and Pescatore. Although it did add that Japan will be expelled from all other territories which she has taken by violence and greed. As to the word of the Cairo Declaration, there were harsh responses from Japan. For example, the expulsion of Japan from the territory which she took by violence and greed is difficult for the Japanese to understand since all countries have acquired additional territory in such a way. Let me touch upon the interpretation of the Supreme Command for the Allied Powers the Instruction, so-called the SCAPIN. The General Headquarters for the Supreme Command for the Allied Power it gave instruction number 677 entitled Government and Administrative Separation of Certain Allied Areas from Japan on January 29, 1946, which state that the Imperial Japanese government is directed to cease exercising or attempting to exercise governmental or the administrative authority over any area outside of Japan or over any government officials and employees or any other persons within such areas. It further states that for the purpose of this directive, Japan is defined to include the four main islands of Japan, Hokkaido, Honshu, Kyushu, and Shikoku, and approximately a thousand smaller adjacent islands, and excluding Kuril, Habamai, and Sikotan Island. This instruction has been considered as one of the significant legal instruments deciding destiny of the Kuril Island especially favoring Russia. Russia continuously maintained that Scaping 677 decreed the cessation of Japan's admiration of various non adjacent territories, including the Kuril Island, and this is a strong indication what the Allied powers desire. In response to this Russian claim, Japan argued that the Scaping 677 suspended only Japan's administration of various island areas, including the Kuril Island, and it did not preclude Japan from exercising sovereignty over this area permanently. The United States recognized that the question of international sovereignty was outside the SCAP's the authority. As Scaping 677 itself stated, Nothing in this directive shall be construed as an indication of allied policy relating to the ultimate determination of the minor island 
refer to Article A of the Potsdam Declaration. The United States also point out that in all scapings to the Japanese governments regarding authorization of areas for Japanese fishing and the whaling, which were established in the scap, there appeared a statement providing essentially that the present authorization is not an expression of allied power policy relative to ultimate determination of national jurisdiction, international boundaries, or fishing rights in the area concerned or in any other area. Therefore, it was United States position that SCAP in 677 was an operational directive to Japan's government, tentative in character, and that especially states it was not an allied policy determination of the Japanese territory. In the same vein, the SCAP General Order No. 1 merely states that Japanese troops in Sahalin and the Kuril Archipelago should surrender the command of the Soviet forces far east, and it did not and was not intended to touch upon the final disposition of this island. There is also, however, a report titled The Summaries of the FEC, the Far East Commission Policy Statements and Certain Scap Directives to the Japanese government with proposals for disposition in the peace settlement with Japan Regarding the relations between territorial questions and SCAP in 677, which defines the present area of Japan's jurisdiction and provides a starting point for decisions on details of territorial adjustment. SCAP 677 further states that, for the purpose of this directive, Japan is defined to include the four main islands of Japan and approximately a thousand smaller adjacent islands, and excluding the Liangko Rock, which is Tokto. This instruction is also considered one of the significant legal instruments that could decide the destiny of Tokto in favor of Korea. Korea continues to maintain the SCAP 677 decreed a cessation of Japan's administration over various non-adjacent territories including the Dokdo, and this is a strong indication of what the Allied powers desire to remove from the Japan's jurisdiction. In response to this Korean claim, Japan argued that Skepin 677 suspended only Japan's administration of various the island areas, including the Dokdo, and it did not preclude Japan from exercising sovereignty over this area permanently as the United States also opined in the same vein. A later instruction, Skepin 1778 of the September 1947, designated the islet as a bombing range for the Far East Air Force, and further provided that use of the range would be made only after notification through Japanese civil authorities to the inhabitants of the Oki Island and the southern uh, uh, certain ports on western Honshu. The action of the U.S. Japan Joint Committee in designating these rocks as a, a facility of the Japanese government is therefore justified according to Japanese the interpretation. Again, Skepin 677 did not purport to express a large policy as to the ultimate determination of national jurisdiction, international boundaries, or fishing rice in the area concerned or in any other areas. Skepin 1033 of June of the 1946 also provide that Japanese vessels or personnel thereof will not approach closer than 12 miles to Takeshima. The prison authorization is not an expression of allied policy relative to ultimate determination of national jurisdiction, international boundaries of fishing rights in the area concerned, or in other area. The intensity of the Korean War, the fighting, help explain why recognizing Korean sovereignty of Dokdo 
might have seemed to be in consistency with the strategic interests of the United States. But it is less clear why the United States declined to recognize the sovereignty of Japan over the island. Why the drafters of the San Francisco Peace Treaty choose to omit any reference to Dokdo when the inevitable result would be decades of international dispute between Korea and Japan. Let's touch upon the U.S.-Japan collusion against the Korea. Despite numerous attempts made during the drafting process to convince the United States to define Dokdo as a Korean territory, the U.S. diplomat ultimately declined to create the request. U.S. leaders also excluded Korean delegates from the peace treaty, the signing ceremony in San Francisco in 1951, thus depriving Korea of its final chance to argue its position. The United States has originally intended to invite Korea to the signing ceremony as a means of extending the international legitimacy to the newly created Republic of Korea. But on the July the 19, 1951, when the last met the Korean ambassador to the United States and reversed his position, the last claimed that Korea could not be a signatory to the treaty because only those nations in a state of war with Japan and which were signatory of the United Nations Declaration of 1942 would sign the treaty. The less probably had some other motive for excluding Korea because of Vietnam, Laos, and other nations that were not signatories of the 1942 UN Declaration were included in a ceremony. John Price has suggested that the United States wanted to exclude the Korean living in Japan from the property benefits that a lot of civilians would receive under the treaty, explaining that the less suggests that many of these Koreans were undesirable, being in many cases from North Korea and constituting a center for communist agitation in Japan. Because of their desire to expel these Koreans from Japan, the United States and Japan agreed to prevent Korean delegates from signing the treaty. What is the impact of the Cold War on the drafting of the San Francisco Peace Treaty? A review of this early Cold War history reveals that the U.S. approach towards Dr. Sovereignty was based on geopolitical considerations rather than on an examination of Dokdo's history. U.S. diplomatic uh, did not want to shut the door on the possibility of using Dokdo for U.S. military need and had a substantial interest in having the San Francisco Peace Treaty signed quickly to limit the possibility Japan or Korea might fall under the communist sphere of influence. These diplomats may also have realized the value of creating a buffer zone, as well as the wedge ish between Japan and Korea for insurance in the event of the collapse of the Korean government. The decision to exclude the any reference Dokdo in the territory closed San Francisco Peace Treaty was not based on assessments of the historical claims to Dokdo, but rather on the dynamics and tension of the emerging Cold War. Because this geopolitical consideration dominates the drafting of the ultimate text of the treaty, and because the final text treaty that makes no reference to Dokdo, the treaty cannot be viewed as a factor in determining the sovereignty over Dokdo. Also significant is the recognition that the final text of the treaty was not designated to be comprehensive and it was not designed to be comprehensive either, and it was not intended to resolve all dispute, but was written in a short form in order to enable Japan to consolidate itself against communist threat and allow the United States to focus on the defense of the Korean Peninsula from the communist military activity. The omission of any reference to Dr. Kennard are therefore viewed as creating an ambiguity 
because the treaty did not purport to address all controversies. I'm going to give you the wrap up of this week's lecture. Upon Korea's designing the treaty on basic relations with Japan in 1965 to normalize diplomatic relations, two countries tried to solve and settle legal issues by concluding additional treaties, such as the agreement on the settlement of problem concerning property and claims, agreement concerning cultural asset and cultural cooperation, and agreement concerning legal status and treatment of Korean residents in Japan. Without any success, the issue on legality or legitimacy of Japan's ruling over Korea under international law was never solved and rather ended up with a vague provisions in the treaty, which in turn raised a matter of interpretation until the present time. Another key issue arising out of the Japanese colonization of Korea is related to Tokto, a group of small islands in the East Sea, because the issue surrounding Tokto is often raised in the context of Japanese imperialism and expansionism into Korea.